Welcome back to Auto Anatomy. My name is Sean, thanks for joining us. In the spirit of trying to make the Corvair just a little bit better for a daily driver, last time we, uh, we upgraded the blower motor to a higher volume unit just so we could get a little bit more heat in the winter time. Made a tremendous difference, but what I've noticed as well is that winters here in South Carolina, you can get kind of misty and then the windshield gets dirty and you need to use the windshield washers. Now, maybe on a brand new car, this washer system would have worked well. On this one, it's terrible. We went through two videos trying to make this thing work right. It's got a new diaphragm, it's been rebuilt, and while technically it works, it's not good by any stretch. So I'm going to upgrade and put in an electric washer pump mechanism, but we're gonna do it in a way that kind of preserves the original feel of the, uh, the Corvair and doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. So this is what I picked up. It is a Trico 11-100, and I'll put a link in the description. And this is just a universal, you know, 12 volt washer pump. But one of the things I like about it is that on the instruction manuals itself, it has directions for wiring it up to GM cars with pump mounted on wiper motor. So this is gonna be perfect for our application. Let me show you what we're currently working with. Like I said previously, we had rebuilt the, uh, the washer pump on this thing, and I'll put a link in the description above so you can see what we've done. And it worked okay, but it just really wasn't good. So when we turn the washers on here, so get the wipers on, and we'll get it on high just to give it every benefit, and then press the button. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this or not, but there's a pop about every fourth sweep. And that is the plunger coming down and releasing. And in theory, it should squirt once it, it, it releases. Problem is it doesn't really squirt. It takes like 30 seconds to even get a little bit of pressure built up into it. And then as soon as you let go, it loses its prime again. Now I fully recognize that a new pump and one that's in working order probably shouldn't work that way, but I'm over it and I'm tired of messing with this thing. And I'm just gonna put something in there that I know will work, that's reliable, and that uh, I don't have to worry about failing, you know, a diaphragm in the future. Coming around under the hood, so we've got our wiper motor assembly, and then this is the washer pump. And you can see here's our, our rebuilt uh, top piece and there's a brand new diaphragm in there. We'll take this apart and show you. What I'd like to do is basically create a bracket to mount the electric water pump or washer pump right here and then try and use this um, cover if we can in some way. It's not gonna look like this, but it's gonna at least look somewhat factory and won't just look like a, a washer motor, you know, drilled into the firewall. So I think the best first step is let's get the washer pump off, get it onto the bench and see what we can do about whipping up a bracket to mount the new electric pump in the same location as the original washer pump. Before we get started, if you like seeing classic cars get brought back to life, take just a moment and hit that subscribe button. Click on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see on future videos and share with your friends. It's an absolutely free way to help support our channel. All right. Enough talking, let's dive into getting this washer pump replaced. There's really nothing to getting this pump off. We're talking like the three hoses, the one connector, and then there's two quarter inch um, bolts, and this thing comes right off. All right, here's the old washer pump assembly. And effectively what I wanna do is replicate this bracket, but make it a little bit wider so that we can accommodate this pump. Now you can see this pump is pretty close in dimension to the plastic cover. So I'm gonna do my best to hide the new washer pump underneath this uh, black plastic cover. So I think the first thing to do is let's get this, uh, this taken apart, see if we can strip it down to pretty much just the, uh, the bare bracket itself, start taking some measurements and design a bracket for it.
All right, so here you can see the uh, the new diaphragm that we put in um, a couple of videos ago. Still in good shape, not torn. Everything looks good. And the one-way valves here all look like they're in good shape. So, so I think this is probably a design that worked well for the time, but um, we've got better options now. So let me finish tearing this thing down. Okay, with this all torn down, you can see roughly what we're gonna try and replicate. So I'm not gonna be able to bolt this on right here just because this bracket is in place or this pin is in place. Now, in theory, what we could do is just strip everything off of this bracket and just bolt this on right here. But I'm gonna try something a little bit different um, just because I like making things difficult for myself. So let me pull some measurements off of this. I wanna try and make this maybe, gosh, a half inch wider so that we can bolt this onto uh, to this bracket. So let me pull some measurements off of this and see what we can come up with. So this is what I've come up with, and it's gonna be hard to kind of see this on, uh, on camera, but in effect, this bracket is gonna go kind of like that. So it's gonna bend up, it's gonna be one inch tall, 2.75 inches this way, and 2.25 inches wide. So that will allow us to bolt the new electric motor onto the bracket here, and then we're gonna create a couple of little tabs or a tab on one side so that we can then put this, the, um, the original cover over the electric motor so that, you know, again, I'm not trying to fool anybody, but that at first glance, maybe it looks not terribly out of place. So let me translate these, uh, these specs to a piece of, uh, of sheet metal and see if we can get this cut out, start bending it up and hopefully see if this thing fits. Okay, so this is what I came up with. This is hopefully going to mount to the wiper motor, just like the original bracket. And as you can see, hopefully, it's maybe an eighth of an inch taller and about a half an inch wider. And the reason is so that I can screw down the, uh, the new electric 
motor and have a good mounting bracket for it. Plus, I want to be able to take the original cover that was on here like so, and we're going to take it, flip it upside down so that it's solid on the top, open on the bottom, and I cut a slot on the side so that we can take the existing cover and mount it something about like that. So it's not going to look completely original, but at first glance, it's going to look, you know, not totally abnormal. We'll have the one hose coming out here. This is the outlet side of the pump, and we've got the inlet side of the pump. So let's mount this guy onto the, uh, the wiper motor, make sure everything fits. Then I think we can just get this painted up and wired in place. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty happy the way that that looks. Um, like I said, it doesn't look completely original and it's not trying to fool anybody. But I think at first glance, people aren't going to really notice that, which is really what I was hoping for. So what's left is I need to get some male speed connectors and wire this up and then just run a hose from the bottom to the top of the, uh, the washer reservoir and then from the side coming up to a T to both windshield nozzles. And here is the final outcome. I think it turned out really nice. Um, of course, you know, we're not gonna be trying to fool anyone to think that it's original, but it doesn't look terribly out of place. And at first glance, most people probably wouldn't even notice. But the real question is, does it work? All right, let's try this thing out and see how it squirts. Looky there, we've got washers. I think there's a tendency when it comes to working on cars to feel like in order to really feel like you've been productive when you're out working in the garage that you've got to do something you know monumental like painting a car or rebuilding the suspension or putting an engine in and the reality is sometimes the smallest changes can make the biggest impact on just the overall feel of the car was this a huge project absolutely not but what it did do is it checked the box on removing one of those big annoyances of driving the car, especially during the, the fall and winter here in South Carolina. So for about 20 bucks, maybe an hour of your time, this is an upgrade that I think is absolutely worth it if you're daily driving or at least frequently driving your Corvair. That's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you all so much for watching. On the next video, we are going to be doing the exhaust system. Now, I am still trying to accumulate a lot of bits and pieces, and frankly, I don't want to tear the car apart because I'm enjoying driving it. So that may be after Christmas before we get to, to doing the exhaust. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. God bless. And if I don't see you before then, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's.